Hey, what up guys? Hey, I just wanted to do a quick uh, video on the service bag that I carry. Uh, I do electrical and HVAC and I've been licensed since 2005. I'm um, reporting from Chicago. This is what I carry with me literally every day. This is how I make a living actually, uh, electrical and HVAC. Uh, I feel like this is the best bag out there in the market. And every time I go to the supply house, they have tons of bags. They got this bag, they got that bag. This one's 300, this one's 200. This one's 120 at Home Depot, honestly. And if you got leftover material, return it, store credit, boom, free bag. Uh, I just wanted to show you guys the stuff that I carry every day with me as an electrical and HVAC technician. Licensed since 2005. I do anything from service calls, new installs, new construction, steam, hot water, uh, boilers, and anything pretty much guys so this is the stuff that i carry with me and i just wanted to show you guys uh what i got all right so first things first is um my metal sh metal shears metal shears so for these ones you don't want to get the straight ones you don't want to get the yellow ones you don't really want to get them from home depot these are the best ones right here the 40 oh man i just cut myself look at it you see real sharp um 45 degrees 45 degrees so you can cut uh, the red ones are for cutting this way. The green ones are for cutting this way. So these are the two shears that I carry with me at all times. I think these cost like 40 bucks each. I'm not sure. These I had for a while, but these are like, oh, don't ever cut wire or metal or anything with this except sheet metal, okay? Because technically those little nicks will turn up on the sheet metal. And then also, uh, I carry these star bits with the little hole in them. Uh, these I use for water heaters actually. It's the only time I really ever needed these for water heaters. So troubleshooting a hot water heater, uh, if you need to open that bottom door to check the thermocoupler and all that stuff, you're gonna need these. As far as screwdrivers is concerned, you're gonna need a small Phillips obviously, and you're gonna need the normal Phillips. These are the first two screwdrivers in the bag so technically this one will go here and this one will go here just so you guys get an idea of how it's going to look okay and then you also got this flat one right here which will be the next one right here <clears throat> also have these um these bits right here these are actually good bits right here if you do any type of hvac uh the yellow band is 5 16 red band is one quarter and you can pop these out you see, and then technically what I like about these is that you can clean the metal shavings off the magnet. Um, a lot of these bits that are standalone, you get the metal shavings inside of there. And then when you put a screw in there, it, it doesn't really go in all the way. Uh, so I, I carry a few of these and also some shorter ones. This one, um, I, it's in a... This is technically falls under the specialty screwdrivers, you know, technically any bit can go in here. And then I have this right here that has an assortment of bits. Uh, I rarely use it, but once in a while it, it does come in handy. It takes up a lot of space, but it's good to have all these weird bits in there just because you never know. Technically, chapstick is a tool, guys. Chapstick is a tool, man. Just know that. Especially in the winter, uh, when you're working, your lips can get dried up. And before you know it, you got red lips, baby. Alright, uh, this is another one of those bags of knickknacks that I carry with me. It's mostly these things right here, these connectors right here. I think they're called spade connectors. Uh, I carry this with me because there's a lot of motherboards that you mess with, especially in HVAC. <clears throat> so this one you always got to have also. Alright hammer you gotta have a hammer guys you never know sometimes you just gotta hit something or tap something or pry something and you can't do it without a hammer all right just so you guys know a measuring tape uh measuring tape me personally i always get the dewalt uh this one is 35 feet actually so i always get the 35 footers um, cause technically sometimes you got to measure it from one side of the wall to the other side of the wall and 35 feet, eh, it kind of covers almost the whole thing. You do want to be able to have the thing be long enough so you don't got to be like this 
all the tape ran out and then make a little line and then go all the way over here and measure again. Uh, 35 feet covers a lot. Uh, specialty screwdriver. So this one right here is an insulated screwdriver. It has a flat and inside of here you spin this. Uh, it has the Phillips on the other side. So this one I'll use like on live panels and stuff like that just to make sure I don't short anything out or anything like that. You gotta have at least one insulated uh, screwdriver. Hexes. You gotta have the hexes. Uh, there's two of them just so you know. There's a uh, standard and metric so you got to carry both because you never know what you'll find uh, I'll give you an example uh, if you make a hole with the hole saw well that little screw that holds the pilot in there hex all right let's see what else we got okay precision all-in-one screwdriver said uh, this one uh, yeah I, li I like this one technically I only ever really used it like maybe a few times but the times that I have used it it's come in handy but you gotta have this because you never know what you're gonna find. And plus it's not that expensive, but I always carry this with me. All right guys, um, a close quarter pipe cutter because sometimes you don't have all the space to go around. Uh, this one mostly plumbing, water lines, stuff like that. Uh, it comes in handy, close quarters. I always get rigid. I, I don't get anything else when it comes to pipe cutters. Rigid is the way to go. And then we have this uh, 7 in 1 nut driver here. Um, honestly, this is the one tool that I barely use, but when I do use it, uh, it emergencies. Usually these I use for like removing uh, blower motors from furnaces and stuff like that. Usually always something to do with some type of motor. It's rare, but when I do need it, it it's handy to have this, you know, because usually I don't really carry sockets and all that stuff with me because I barely even use them. And then also you want to have a chalk line. Um, red one is, is uh, to me, is, is the most visible color. Uh, 100 feet. Basic chalk line, guys. Uh, electrical, you, you'll need it to mark a chalk line here, chalk line there. You, you got to have a chalk line. And technically, all this stuff right here has this pocket inside of this bag. Gloves. You got to have gloves. Me, personally, I get these right here. Uh, I don't even know what they call them, but you, you need to be able to have fingerless you gotta have fingerless gloves, guys, because sometimes you need protection, but you also need to be able to use your fingers. HVAC is a good trade, man. Good trade, guys. I live off it, actually. I support my family off it. And then let me see if I find the other one. Well, for now, uh, I have this non-contact voltage tester. There's two of them, okay, just so you know. Uh, they both read power from 12 volts to regular vo house voltage. Uh, this comes in handy when you're trying to find the C wire on a transformer, like if you're connecting a smart thermostat. But this one in particular has a laser. Uh oh, let me see if I can get it to work. Well, I guess it's not working. But it has a laser. <clears throat> That'll technically tell you the distance of stuff. So this one I'll use if I'm like trying to measure a quick room, trying to get a quick dimension. Oh, there you go. There's the laser. <clears throat> so it'll, it'll tell me uh, how far it is, 2.6 feet and stuff like that. It makes measuring rooms real quick, especially when you just need the length and the width, pa pa, and you got it. These are the heavy hitters. These are the linemen. You're not an electrician if you don't have this. I'm gonna tell you that right now. Uh, these are basic. These are like 50 bucks. If you're gonna buy these, you might as well buy the most pricey ones out there. Uh, these are the ones that I roll with. Honestly, don't lose these. Honestly, I don't even like anyone touching any of my tools, you know. Usually that bag is just for me. If I hire anybody to help me, they need to have their own tools, man. Or if not, you're getting a pay cut. Uh, markers. Two sets of markers. Technically, you need markers, okay? Let's say you need to scribe some sheet metal, mark a pipe, leave a note, anything of that nature. You need to have a marker. Uh, many, I, I've been stuck on a few jobs sometimes where you don't have a marker and, and it just makes things take longer. And then we have this uh, saw blade for drywall electricians. This is the one that I get. I like this one because it folds in, takes up less space. Yeah, I, I like this one, and, and it's tough. The last one that I had, I had it like I think two, two to three years, and, and it's never needed to be sharpened. 
This one just when you really got to cut something real fast. This guy will get you through. Also, you got to have an assortment of tapes. Uh, black tape, white tape, green tape. Uh, and yeah, they all go right here. Obviously, you know. And then me personally, I, I carry Teflon tape on me at all times. Uh, especially, like, let's say you do HVAC and, and, and you know, um, on the coil, three quarters, thread it. Well, you got to have that. Alright. <clears throat> uh, these are... What is this? Like uh, markers? Wire markers? I think I'll never use this once in my life, honestly. But since it's low profile, slim, takes up no space, uh, it's it's good to have in the bag. You never know when you might need a marker wire for whatever reason. Alright, check this knife out. This one everyone's talking about. Uh, this knife right here. I like it because you can press it, open and close. I like this little bit right here. It has this uh, Phillips and then if you flip it over, it'll have the flat head. Yeah, the, the same thing, I, I like this one. So this is the knife that I use, but you do gotta have a knife, especially when you're doing electrical and you're working with stranded or solid wires and you're trying to make a slit on the wire to wrap around the outlet, you need to have a knife. If not, good luck. And then we got these uh, needle nose pliers also. These I use a lot uh, with low voltage. I use this a lot with low voltage, the small wires, twisting, pulling, plucking. Uh, you gotta have needle nose. You have to have needle nose. And like same thing, it has its own spot in the bag. This is why I like this bag. I, if I was to leave a job site and I see an empty slot in there, boom, right away I know I'm missing something. And depending where the slot is, I know what I'm missing. Uh, and you gotta have a reamer. You can't do no pipe work with no reamer. Uh, this reamer right here covers anything from half inch, three quarters to one inch. And then technically, Ideal has a reamer that has uh, the square bit in here, inside of here. And then it has the uh, wire nut, like a, like a hole where you go like this with the wire nuts and you're able to twist it. Me, personally, I like these right here. I, I roll with Kleins. This is like 50 bucks, I think. Alright, look at this Z tool. A quarter inch and five sixteenths. Z tool. Uh, I like this one also. This one, honestly, flame sensors. When it's a tight spot, this will get you out of it right away. It's a close quarters. <clears throat> All right. We got these bulldogs right here, guys. Bulldogs, bulldogs. Uh, this one, it's a must-have also if you do electrical work. Sometimes you got to get in there and snip a wire real quick. Uh, these are the bulldogs that I use. And yeah, you gotta have bulldogs. There's there's not really much. <clears throat> if you need them, you need them. You know, you're not gonna be able to cut something real tight with this, or 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 with this. Cause look at look at the end. It needs to be bulldogs. What well, we call these bulldogs, guys? Just so you know, I don't know what 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 are these diagonal cutters? Yeah. Uh, right here, we also got uh, an assortment of bits. Um, yeah, you never know when you need to make a starting hole or a small hole for whatever reason or drill something out. Uh, I keep a simple set of these just on, on house in case you never know. Usually for these, um, I always do the starting hole for the step drills because when you use a step drill, after a while the tip becomes dull and then you're just there wasting your time just trying to drill it through while you could just make a quick hole, boom, two second job. This guy right here is probably my most used tool. It's an 11 and one uh, <clears throat> combination screwdriver. Obviously has a one quarter and five sixteenths bit. This one, most times I do service calls. I take this guy right here. And this guy takes care of a lot of stuff for me. Yeah, basic, basic. It even has three eighths. A uh, few star bits, the square bits, basic stuff. But this one has everything. If, if you're trying to like be low compact, boom, that's the guy. Once you start doing thermostat work and low voltage, uh, look at this one. This is a 27 and one, 27 and one, uh, yeah, 27 and one precision screwdriver. This is the one that I use. Yeah, rare earth. This is the one that I use, uh, thermostats. Almost every single time it's thermostats. You need that if you're working with thermostats. 
and then check these out you need adjustable wrench technically you need two okay uh, i think i only have one for now but adjustable wrench anytime you have a valves or or anything that you can't really be pinching with the channel locks these are the guys and technically you want to have two right now i only have one like i said this is part one this is the rough stuff in there check this level out look at that so this is my level right here uh, I used to have the Dewalt one, the yellow one, that had the two rubber ends, but, but the ends would always come off, man. It was really annoying, actually. So now that I'm, I'm in the market to rebuy my tools, I, I saw this one, so I was like, oh, man, this one's pretty cool. So we're keeping this one. A level. You got to have a level, man. How else are you going to know if something is straight? All right, so this is my wire strippers. <clears throat> um, low profile, low profile. Uh, it's got the crimps also. It's got these holes right here so that you can trim uh, the screws. 832 and 632 are the most common ones in electrical and wire strippers. And usually it technically has these holes for loops, but I, I'll use this for loops right here. But yeah, these are the wire strippers that you want right here. These are good. All right. <clears throat> uh, a backup low voltage uh real micro screwdriver because you never know let's say you lose this one you gotta at least have it back up man because the last thing you want to do is be going to the store to home depot because you don't have a little screwdriver or you don't want to be asking the guy wherever you're at hey do you have a screwdriver sir no you, you gotta have your own look at this guy right here this is what they call the good old switcheroo so when you do hvac work uh when you take the door off there's always that switch so this has a big magnet in here, so it holds the switch down. Switcheroo must have actually when you're servicing the ACs, unless you're trying to jump wires or do some goofy stuff. Uh, this one right here, just stick it and that's it. I also recommend carrying a tool uh, specifically for crimps. If you, if you can see right here, it's for crimp, crimping wires. Uh, the ones that I had earlier, <clears throat> The ones that I had earlier um, were blue and it only had this top part. I guess they, the clients added the wire strippers over here too. So uh, we, we gave these a shot. These are the ones that um, I'm, I'm working with right now. You got to have crimps, guys. You got to be able to crimp some stuff. All right. So this is my other non-contact voltage. This one, if you look at the laser, it does temperature. So look, it's 74.6 degrees. So that's why I like this one. Same thing, uh, it reads from 12 to 1,000 volts. Same thing for transformers if you want to find the C wire. This one will tell you which one's the hot. <clears throat> and by process of elimination, uh, the C wire is the other one. So stubby, uh, I love stubby, man. You got to have stubby. Sometimes when you got like a real tight tolerance or a real small space, um, if you don't want to use the Z tool, stubby will save the day. Uh, it's mandatory you have this actually mandatory stubby and i guess everyone calls it stubby all right also you gotta have an inspection mirror you gotta be able to inspect and then i like this one because it has two batteries and it has a flashlight in here with two lights so sometimes when you're doing like a uh, brazing or soldering before you turn either the gas on or the water on uh, it, it, it's a good idea to check around the seams to make sure you don't have any cracks You know save yourself some time Okay, we also got this crowbar here uh, Yeah, this crowbar right here I keep in the bag at all the time and technically you never know when you might have to pull something leverage something this plus this or or a deadly combination with the hammer You got to have that and then I, I don't know why, but I always carry these um, hex right here. These, this one right here, I, I mostly use for like, um, for meters, electrical meters when, when the power comes in. Uh, you know how you got the nut in there to tie these meters. This is kind of, honestly, the only time I really use this one. If not, I'll use the regular hexes that I have there. But I feel like this one, I, I get a little bit more leverage. Oh, right here, my striker. This is the flathead striker in here. Uh, yeah, this is this is definitely a must. And look, this one has a metal head on there, so you can hit it with the hammer, and it's no problem. 
Yeah, th this one's good. This one's good, guys. This one's good. This one you need, honestly. And then, obviously, uh, channel locks. Technically, you want to have a small, medium, and large, if possible. Channel locks. I have a spot for all these channel locks. And usually, I carry, like, four of them, I think. I carry these two small ones. This one, and then another one that I have in here. Let's see if I'll pop it out. Oh, okay, okay. So, this one's a PVC pipe cutter. I like this one because it's a low profile. The one that I had before that you can find on the plumbing aisle, it's a big bulky one. It does up to like, I think an inch and a quarter, but for HVAC and for what we do, uh, three quarters would probably be like the biggest size you would ever have to like cut real fast. And that's usually for the drain, for the AC. Uh, I, I like this one actually. This, uh, if it's a new thing, I, I just saw it at Home Depot actually. It might be completely new, but we have it. A service wrench uh, for H HVAC king valves uh, for the low side and the high side and it has a ratcheting action so that you can open or close those valves quickly this is HVAC right there all HVAC and then these are the other channel locks that I, I just discovered also so uh, I never even use these but I, I, I was in the market for some channel locks and usually I'm a clients guy so we're, we're gonna roll with these right here. Some some nice Klein channel locks. Same thing, this this goes part of the channel lock family. Honestly, this, this one probably I use almost every single time. Channel locks. All right, for electri electrical work, uh, paddle bits, paddle bits. Uh, half inch and seven eighths. Half inch for when I'm running thermostat wire, seven eighths for when I'm doing electrical pipes. And technically, you want to get the ones that have the little screw on the top right here. Um, I, I call them paddle bits. Uh, the reason you want that screw up there is because um, as you go in there, that screw, it, 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 it self, it literally just makes the job easier. Because imagine drilling a screw with the blades in the back. It, it makes drilling a whole like effortless. Effortless, actually. That's why I like those paddle bits. I... <clears throat> Uh, you want to have a sleeve like this for drywall screws and then technically you want to have one of these bits that slides out with the protector So that when you put a screw in there and slide it out, it, it'll stick in there But this is this is a must-have also must-have must-have and usually this one always gets lost So keep an eye on it And then also for the electric for the electrical um, I have 832 and 632 I got a drill and a tap uh, for either fixing threads or making new threads uh, I'll give you an example old electrical pancake boxes you know there's no holes to accept light fixtures right so usually for something like that I'll drill a hole I'll tap it and then I'm able to insert a screw and hold the light fixture up on old pancake boxes I really don't like doing it honestly if somebody has old electrical I really don't even want to be there and then I got this uh, little popper right here for HVAC for when you have a short circuit or anything like that instead of blowing fuses all the time uh, you got this little popper here which will save you some fuses I'll never use it a few times usually when I troubleshoot a, a short I, I, I find it and then I don't really need it because I, I know what the short is what's causing it and how to fix it and then I got this backup one right here that I bought like at the supply house it's technically the same thing a little screwdriver I got a lot of little screwdrivers. This one's probably not even needed, but it, it's in the bag. I, I got it in there. Okay, we're almost done, guys. Um, this one for my phone, actually. This one can go on one of the straps, and boom, you got your phone out there. That way it's not in your pants, pulling your pants down and all that other stuff. Or sometimes when you're sitting down, you don't want to really be cracking your phone. All right, this light right here. Uh, when you go to Home Depot, they have a $30 light and they have a $50 light. Uh, this is the $50 light. It's uh, rechargeable. Uh, it's really bright. Uh, it's really bright. It lasts a long time. This is the charge level on it. This is this is the light that I use. Literally, the only light that I use, it, it lasts. It's really bright. I don't even know how many lumens, but I know that it's double the lumens of the $30 one. And then you need an assortment of extensions. You got to have extensions, uh, especially for electrical work. 
when you're drilling by two by fours, let's say there's two two by fours right here and your drill doesn't fit on this one. So you got to go from here and go through the hole. If, if you know what I'm talking about, you know what I'm talking about. But extensions you have to have on you. You don't want to be going to the store later for that, you know. Uh, for this one right here, uh, you got to have a three sixteenths and a one quarter masonry bit because every once in a while you do have to mount stuff onto brick. And when you mount stuff onto brick, you want to make a hole on the brick, not on the mortar like an amateur, okay? Uh, for something like this, you got to have either an impact or a hammer drill, okay? A regular drill won't make that thing work. And then we have this uh, Klein's tool square tip right here for like uh, couplings, connectors, breakers, the neutral bar. You, you need the square tip. Uh, it makes sliding almost impossible. Sometimes uh, if, if you guys have been doing electrical for a while and you try to use the cross or the flathead, I'm sure you stabbed yourself a few times. And then obviously you want to have the, um, the Phillips number two for this guy right here. And you want to have at least one extra one because I'm going to tell you right now you're going to lo lose one. I got this gasket pick right here. This is a gasket pick either for your gauges or for like circulator pumps. Anything gasket, this or it's a pick, man. Worst case, you gotta pick your tooth. Uh, simple pick, not that expensive. Oh man, you gotta have a GFCI tester, guys. You gotta be able to test the stupid GFCI. Hey, okay, okay, okay. the guy wired up the the GFCI, and no one ever tests this, and then the lady gets electrocuted, and then they find that it was never wired right. No, man, you stick this in there, you hit that button, and it should pop. And if it doesn't, it's not wired correctly. Uh, an assortment of wire nuts. You, I'm missing the blue ones here, the little, little blue ones for like low voltage, but you do want to have some wire nuts. Uh, I'm not saying it's an emergency. You never know. You never know. You never know. So you always got to have at least a few in there. Yeah, if you need a lot, then yeah, plan for it. But for a service call or an emergency, yeah, you got to you gotta um, have wire nuts. All right, this is the last thing, and then I'll wrap it up, try to keep this video under 30 minutes. Okay, Home Depot will sell the CL4, uh, or maybe five, I don't know, but the thing is, they'll sell four, five, six, seven, and eight CL. Uh, the 900, I gotta get it on Amazon, CL900. I think I pay like 170 for this one. This one's my favorite, honestly. Look, it has a light right here. You see how it's got a light right here? It's got the uh, range finder, and you wanna get rid of these decimals right here. Uh, it's got the non-contact voltage, so it can go beep, 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 beep. It's got the amp clamp. It's got the voltage, uh, DC, or even millivolts. It's got amps, continuity. It's got the ohms. Uh, it's hertz uh, for the capacitors. Uh, I don't even know what that is. I'll read the book later. But I, I don't use all the settings. But if I ever did need it, I, I can rest assured that I do have it. All right, guys. And this is technically part one of um, my tool bag. Uh, this is like $1,200 right here, guys. Literally $1,200 right here. Um, yeah, so if you're into trades, electrical and HVAC, which is what I, this is literally what I live off I I literally live off HVAC and electrical. Some months, I swear to God, sometimes I'll rank in like 15 grand. All right, so this ain't no joke, guys. 15 grand, yeah, you can spend 1200 to buy here, buy here, buy here. Uh, I'm going to have um, the second part where I'm going to open all this up and show you where everything goes. And then there's going to be a third part where I'm going to fill in the gaps. There's still a lot of other things here that's going to probably hit me up another five, six hundred bucks. I just haven't had the time to go get all the other things. I, I, I took a big hit, guys. Rule number one, never leave your tools anywhere, even if it's your friend. Okay, they'll, they'll slime you out, baby. Just trust me, man, especially with this much on the table. And then, yeah, anyways, thanks for watching my channel. I'm going to have more videos coming up. I had this channel for years, but this year I'm going to try to upload more. I do steam boilers, radiators, hydronics, uh, a lot of service calls, new constructions, new builds, manual J's, manual S's, manual D's, ductwork, furnaces, two stages. I, I do it all, guys. I've been licensed since 2005, actually. And technically, I do machining, Python, Java, AutoCAD. Uh, I'm trying to get a 3D printer. But yeah, welcome to my channel, guys. And thanks for sticking around. And I'm able to keep this under 30 minutes, man. Thank you, guys.
All right, much love from Chicago, man. Thanks for watching, guys. Live from the five. Peace.